Good morning, welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. Today is Friday, September 30th, 2016, the end of the third quarter of the financial year. Uh, there was a significant accident at the busiest rail terminal in the state of New Jersey yesterday morning at about 8.45 a.m., just after the rush hour peak. A New Jersey transit train traveling at what was estimated to be about 40 miles per hour plowed through an abutment at the termination of the railroad track and into the train station, killing one person and injuring several hundred. The accident immediately brought the governors of uh, New Jersey and New York to Hoboken uh, for a day-long series of press conferences and investigations. The National Transportation Safety Board is on site and has been all night. They have recovered the black box. Uh, many of the passengers have been released from the hospital, but as I mentioned, there was one fatality. Interestingly, New Jersey Transit on uh, July 1st of this year bought a $400 million per occurrence uh, coverage of the, uh, for the reinsurance market, as well as a $240 million of a per occurrence on excess liability. Uh, New Jersey Transit paid a total of about $13.7 million in premium for these policies. Undoubtedly, these policies are going to be tapped by people who sustained injuries uh, as a result of yesterday's accident, not to mention the property owners that, uh, in this case, would be the city of Hoboken and the state that owned the terminal. Applied Insurance Research, the big modeling company, is saying that Typhoon Maranti, which came ashore after, uh, in China after going over Taiwan, on September 15th, it came ashore as a Category 4 hurricane, the strongest hurricane in years to hit Fujian province, may have, in fact, racked up insured losses on China, on mainland China alone, of $1.15 billion. This would be a fairly significant loss, considering that the Chinese market has traditionally been underinsured. In one way, this is interesting news because it indicates that the Chinese insurance market is growing and uh, the coverage is expanding. Meanwhile, in the Atlantic Basin, uh, Hurricane Matthew is strengthening. It's uh, whipping out today at Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao, or, uh, areas that are rarely hit by hurricanes. The hurricane is on an, uh, an unusual track. And later today, it's going to pass over the border between Venezuela and Colombia and uh, brush the uh, Maracaibo oil-producing area. It's now a Category 2 storm. It has 105 mile per hour sustained winds. It's expected to grow stronger uh, to be a hurricane uh, Category 3, at least, by the time it uh, nears Jamaica sometime on Monday. Again, the feeling on this storm is that uh, after Jamaica and after Cuba, uh, there's going to be a nexus point as to which way it's going to go, east or west. If it goes west, it's going to go into the Gulf of Mexico, which has particularly warm water at this time of year, much warmer than usual because of uh, climate change. And if that storm then begins to head up to Louisiana, which is already saturated with uh, inundations of rain, it could present some very significant problems. Meanwhile, uh, just off the coast of uh, southern Japan, there's a chemical tanker that's sinking. The chemical tanker is named the Hirok Azamaru. It's owned by the Toso Corporation tanker uh, had just departed uh, about an hour earlier, a port in southern Japan. It's carrying 450 tons of uh, sodium hydroxide. It's a caustic soda. Uh, all four crew members were released, but uh, from photographs of the ship taken by helicopters, it seems certain that it's going to sink. Well, if you've been flying on an airplane lately, you've been hearing warnings from the flight attendants that uh, you basically need to put your Samsung a Galaxy Note 7 phone into a deep freeze and don't dare turn it on during the flight. Samsung uh, has been faced with exploding batteries that uh, have issued a number of recalls in response. Meanwhile, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission uh, on Thursday uh, issued a warning on exploding Samsung washing machines. These would be uh, limited to top-loading washing machines that apparently have a propensity to explode. Samsung uh, seems to have inadvertently strayed into the uh, armaments uh, business. Meanwhile, for the first time in 20 years, American Airlines has introduced new uniforms for its flight attendants. This occurred on the 20th of September. 
Uh, it was introduced with great fanfare. The only difficulty is, is that thus far foreign flight attendants have uh, filed complaints saying that they're breaking out into hives and uh, developing headaches as a result of the new uniforms. This is a fairly unusually large percentage of people that have responded this way. American Airlines say that the uh, uh, complaints may be related to allergies related to uh, wool. Uh, no word yet on whether or not the uh, airline is going to do anything about the new uniforms. Interestingly enough, Nicolas Sarkozy, the uh, former president of France who is running for re-election next year, made an announcement yesterday saying that he would reverse the British exit from the European Union. He said that uh, the first day after his election he would travel to Berlin to visit German Chancellor Angela Merkel. He would be carrying with him a revised treaty, a revised European Union treaty. This is the treaty that was hammered out laboriously over decades by all 27 member states. Mr. Sarkozy would revise the treaty to make it much more favorable to Britain. He would obtain Ms. Merkel's consent uh, for the Germans to agree to the new treaty, to make it more acceptable to keep the UK in the EU, and then he would immediately travel to London to meet with British Prime Minister Theresa May and ask her to remain in the EU because now the treaty would have been changed to accommodate all of the Brexit concerns. Uh, Paris officially, President Hollande, who is the current president, said that the uh, scheme was pure fabrication. Uh, the Germans uh, responded neutrally, however, saying that uh, this is not in the works. There's been no word from London yet. Meanwhile, in the United States, uh, the Washington Post is reporting that Donald Trump's foundation has not bothered to obtain the necessary legal certification required from the state of New York where it's located in order to solicit donations from the public, which is what he's been doing precisely for the past 10 years. New polls are showing that Hillary Clinton is pulling ahead of him in certain key battleground states, such as Florida, Michigan, and New Hampshire. Next debate is scheduled for a week from Sunday. That's the news for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. If not, have a good weekend, and we'll see you on Monday.